Let us stand and join in singing City of God. Yeah, join in on the refrain. Awake from your slumber, arise from your sleep. A new day is dawning for all those who weep. The people in darkness have seen a great light. The Lord of our longing has conquered the night. Let us build the city of God. May our tears be turned into dancing. For the Lord, our light and our love, has turned the night into day. We are sons of the morning, we are daughters of day, the one who has loved us has brightened our way. The Lord of all kindness has called us to be a light for his people to set their hearts free. Let us build the city of God. May our tears be turned into dancing. For the Lord, our light and our love, has turned the night into day. God is light. In Him there is no darkness. Let us walk in his light, his children one and all. Oh, comfort my people, make gentle your words, proclaim to my city the day of the birth. Let us build the city of God.
dichosos los que trabajan por la paz, porque se les llamará hijos de Dios. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. There was a scholar of the law who stood up to test Jesus and said, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? He said in reply, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your strength, and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. He replied to him, You have answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. But because he wished to justify himself, he said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man fell victim to robbers as he went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. They stripped him and beat him and went off, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down that road, but when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. Likewise, a Levite came to the place, and when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. But a Samaritan traveler who came upon him was moved with compassion at the sight. He approached the victim, poured oil and wine over his wounds, and bandaged them. Then he lifted him on his own animal, took him to an inn, and cared for him. The next day he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper with this instruction, take care of him. If you spend more than what I have given you, I shall repay you on my way back. Which of these three, in your opinion, was neighbor to the robber's victim? He answered, the one who treated him with mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. El racismo sigue afectando profundamente nuestra cultura y no tiene lugar en el corazón cristiano. Este mal causa un gran daño a sus víctimas y corrompe las almas de quienes albergan pensamientos racistas o prejuiciosos. Racism profoundly affects our culture, and it has no place in the Christian heart. This evil causes great harm to its victims, and it corrupts the souls of those who harbor racist or prejudicial thoughts. Es claro que hay muchas personas que sufren de racismo y es necesario actuar. Lo que se necesita y lo que estamos pidiendo es una conversión genuina del corazón, una conversión que obligue al cambio y la reforma de nuestras instituciones y de la sociedad. It is clear that many people are being harmed by racism, so action is needed. What is needed and what we are calling for is a genuine conversion of heart, a conversion that will compel change and the reform of our institutions and society. La conversión es un largo camino para la persona. Llevar a nuestra nación a la plena realización de la promesa de libertad, igualdad y justicia para todos es aún más difícil. Conversion is a long haul just for the individual. Moving our nation to a full realization of the promise of liberty, equality, and justice for all is even more challenging. 
Sin embargo, en Cristo podemos encontrar la fortaleza y la gracia necesarias para emprender ese camino. En ese sentido, cada uno de nosotros debe adoptar como propias las palabras del Papa Francisco de no permitir que nadie piense que esta invitación no es para él. Todos nosotros necesitamos una conversión personal y continua. Nuestras iglesias y nuestras instituciones cívicas y sociales necesitan una reforma continua. As hard as the conversion is individually and as a nation, in Christ we can find the strength and the grace necessary to make that journey. In this regard, each of us should adopt the words of Pope Francis as our own. Let no one think that this invitation is not meant for him or her. All of us are in need of personal, ongoing conversion, and our churches and our civic and instant social institutions are in need of ongoing reform. A lot of these thoughts today come pretty directly from the bishop's letter on racism, but just a reflection on for our church's ongoing reform. I've just finished reading a book by a prominent religious sociologist. And what the statistics are showing in regard to reform for churches and institutions like that is that if you have a scale that's just, that's as fair as it can be of zero to 10, on zero being not racist at all and 10 being really quite racist, uh, most white Catholics would find themselves at a seven on the scale. And most people who don't attend any church and don't say they're affiliated with any church would find themselves on a four. That the evidence is showing more and more that there's something almost even genetic in white Christianity and white Catholicism that militates in very hidden ways towards racism that you don't get if you don't go to church. It's astounding. Solo cuando el racismo se confronta abordando la, sus causas y las injusticias que produce, puede darse la sanación. If racism is confronted by addressing its causes and the injustice it produces, then healing can occur. ¿Cuáles son los pasos necesarios que condicionarían a esta conversión? Encontramos nuestra inspiración en las palabras del profeta Miqueas. Si te ha indicado, hombre, qué es lo bueno y qué exige de ti el Señor. Nada más que practicar la justicia, amar la bondad y caminar humildemente con tu Dios. Practicar la justicia requiere el reconocimiento honesto de nuestras fallas y el restablecimiento de relaciones correctas entre nosotros. What are the necessary steps that would lead to this conversion? We find our inspiration in the words of the prophet Micah. You have been told, O mortal, what is good and what the Lord requires of you, only to do justice and to love goodness and to walk humbly with your God. To do justice requires an honest acknowledgement of our failures and the restoring of right relationships between us. Si confesamos nuestros pecados, Dios que es fiel y justo, nos los perdonará y nos purificará de toda maldad, dice San Juan en su primer carta. Amar la bondad exige procurar lo que contribuye a la paz y a la mutua edificación. Requiere un esfuerzo decidido, pero más aún requiere humildad. Requiere que cada uno de nosotros pida la gracia necesaria para superar este pecado y deshacernos de este flagelo. First letter of John, we hear, if we acknowledge our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from every wrongdoing. Paul writes to the Romans, to love goodness demands pursuing what leads to peace and to building up one another. 
It requires a determined effort, but even more so, it requires humility. It requires each of us to ask for the grace needed to overcome the sin and get rid of the scourge. One of the most embarrassing things for me as this was coming up, and even as a point when I was studying and aware of the racism, you know, in my humility, is being the, the point person who oversaw, made the, the, the final decisions, allowed the final decisions on the renovation of our church space. It's beautiful. Not once, not once did it even occur to me occur to me to see if culturally this were the renovation of the church space was culturally well and inviting for our Hispanic parishioners. This is a wonderful space and it may be wonderful for the the Hispanics. What I'm saying is, is I didn't even ask for 40% of our parishioners. You know, when we say and we talk about people on an individual level, it would say, if you ask, are you racist, you know, but very often you say, no, I don't use that kind of language, and I, I usually try to be inviting and everything, and then that's true so often. It's so insidious. It's so insidious. It's so often what we don't even think of. In order to be able to really get to the root of this, as our bishops are saying, we're praying tonight, it requires a lot of humility. And we go like. Hoy en el nombre de Cristo, llamamos a todos nosotros en este país a caminar humildemente con nuestro Dios para que con, por su gracia se arredique el racismo. And so today, in the name of Christ, we call for all of us in this country to walk humbly with our God so that by his grace, racism will be eradicated. Only by his grace. We shall
la conciencia es el núcleo y sagrario dentro de nosotros donde estamos solos con Dios y escuchamos su llamado a practicar el bien y evitar el mal y hacer esto, evitar aquello. Examinemos nuestra conciencia a la luz del pecado del racismo. He amado plenamente a Dios y he amado plenamente a mi prójimo como a mí mismo. He causado dolor a otros por mis acciones o mis palabras que ofendieron a mi hermano o mi hermana. He hecho lo suficiente para informarme sobre el pecado del racismo, sus raíces y sus manifestaciones históricas y contemporáneas. Y he abierto mi corazón para ver cómo el acceso desigual a las oportunidades económicas, empleos, vivienda y educación sobre la base del color de la piel la raza o el grupo étnico ha negado y sigue negando la igual dignidad de los demás. Hay una raíz de racismo dentro de mí que empaña mi visión de quién es mi prójimo. He presenciado alguna vez una ocasión en que alguien cayó víctima de racismo personal, institucional, sistemático o social y no hice o no dije nada, dejando a la víctima sola para afrontar su dolor. He presenciado una ocasión en que alguien cayó víctima de racismo personal, institucional, sistemático o social, siendo yo quien infligió el dolor, actuando en contra del amor a Dios y en amor al prójimo. He levantado y ayudado alguna vez a una persona que cayó víctima de racismo personal, institucional, sistemático o social y pagué un precio por extender la misericordia al otro? ¿Cómo reaccioné? ¿Creció en mí la fe? ¿Estoy dispuesto a crecer aún más en la fe a través de mis acciones? Spirit of penance, if you're able to, I invite you to kneel. And on the screen, there's an act of penance. We pray together. First, it'll be in, in Spanish, and then that same act will be in English. So when the language of your heart shows up, let's join together to pray that this particular act. Reconozco que el racismo se manifiesta en propios pensamientos, 
actitudes, acciones, inacciones y libertades. También se manifiesta en estructuras sociales y sistemas injustos que perpetúan símbolos de injusticia racial. Con mis acciones individuales y mi participación en estructuras injustas, busco el perdón y paso hacia la reconciliación. Miro dentro de mi corazón y pido la voluntad y la fuerza para contribuir a la sanación del racismo en mi vida. I recognize that racism manifests in my own individual thoughts, actions, actions, and inactions. It also manifests in social structures and unjust systems and perpetuates centuries of racial injustice. For my individual actions and my participation in unjust structures, I seek forgiveness and move towards reconciliation. I look into my heart and ask for the will and the strength to help contribute to the healing of racism in my time. Misericordia, Señor, show us your mercy, O Lord, hemos pecado. For we have sinned. Misericordia, Señor, Mercy on me, God, in your kindness. In your compassion, blot out my offenses. Of my sin, completely cleanse me and wash away my offenses. Pues yo reconozco mi culpa, tengo siempre presente mi pecado, contra ti solo pequé, como ti la maldad que aborrece. Create in me, O oh God, a clean heart. Renew in me a steadfast spirit. Cast me not away from your presence, nor take from me your oh Holy Spirit. Misericordia, Señor, show us your mercy, O Lord, hemos pecado, for we have
It is written in Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26. I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you. I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. Pope Francis reminds us that the Lord calls each of us by name. He knows us by name. He looks at us. He waits for us. He forgives us. He is patient with us. Receiving God's forgiveness and grace requires a response. Pope Francis encourages the believer, whoever experiences divine mercy is impelled to be an architect of mercy among the least and the poor. And so now let us do what God requires, only to do justice and to love goodness and to walk humbly with your God. Let us pray for that. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace to see every human being as a child of God, regardless of race, language, or culture, let us pray to the Lord. Por la sabiduría para recibir las historias y experiencias de los que son diferentes a nosotros, y para responder con respeto, roguemos al Señor. For our faith community, that we may celebrate and welcome the diverse faces of Christ in our worship, our ministries, and our leaders, let us pray to the Lord. Por nuestra comunidad de fe, para que podemos responder con valentía al llamado del Espíritu Santo a actuar juntos para acabar con la violencia y el racismo. Roguemos al Señor. For healing and justice for all those who have experienced violence and racism, let us pray to the Lord. Por la protección de todas las policías y socorristas que arriesgan su vida a diario para garantizar nuestra seguridad, por una acción política justa y equitativa que promueva la paz y el bienestar en todos nuestros vecindarios, roguemos al Señor. For our public officials, that they will strive to work for fair education, adequate housing, and equal opportunity, equal opportunities for employment for all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Dios del cielo y de la tierra, tú creaste la familia humana y donaste a cada persona de un gran dignidad. Ayúdanos, te lo pedimos, a superar el pecado del racismo. Concédenos tu gracia para eliminar esta plaga de nuestros corazones, nuestras comunidades, nuestras instituciones sociales y civiles, y nuestras iglesias. Llena nuestros corazones de amor por ti y nuestro prójimo, para que podamos trabajar contigo en sanar nuestro país de la injusticia racial. Por nuestro Señor Jesucristo, tu Hijo, que vive y reina contigo en la unidad del Espíritu Santo, y es Dios por los siglos de los siglos. Amen. Amen. We have prayed, and now, with changed hearts, let us move our feet to action. Hemos orado. Y ahora, con los corazones cambiados, pongamos nuestros pies en acción. Somos el cuerpo de Cristo. We are the body of Christ. 
more so we dare ye mado. We've answered yes to the call of the Lord. Somos el cuerpo de Cristo. We are the body of Christ. Traemos su santo mensaje. We come to bring the good news of the world. Dios viene al mundo a través de nosotros. Somos el cuerpo. God is revealed when we love one another. We are the body of Christ. Al mundo a cumplir la misión de la iglesia. Somos el cuerpo de Cristo. Bringing the light of God's mercy to others. We are the body of Christ. Somos el cuerpo de Cristo. We are the body of Christ. Hemos oído llamado. Said yes to the call of the Lord. Somos el cuerpo de Cristo. We are the body of Christ. Traemos su santo mensaje. We've come to bring the good news to the world. Cada persona es parte del reino. Somos el cuerpo de Cristo. Putting a stop to all discrimination, we are the body of Christ. Todos las razas que habitan la tierra somos el cuerpo de Cristo. All are invited to feast in the banquet. Somos the body of Christ. Somos el cuerpo de Cristo. We are the body of Christ. Hemos oído el llamado. We've answered yes to the call of the Lord. Oh, somos el cuerpo de Cristo. We are the body of Christ. Traemos su santo mensaje. 